Hi everyone, how are you? So, con- uh, continuing uh, to the last week's the improvised uh, <coughs> substituted version of the lecture uh, recording uh, this week, I'm going to cover the rest of the chapter 4. Uh, well, actually, originally the chapter 4 was a uh, little bit of the uh, makeshift. Uh, has been made uh, with at least some of the new figures and etc. But as I <coughs> excuse me explained earlier last week, uh, uh, I had some problems in uh, this uh, file application, the handling, the video editing handling application. So everything got screwed up, uh, and my computer got keep. Uh, <coughs> Crash, being crashed. Uh, so I had to go back to uh, have the emergency the rescue uh, activity to pull out some of the uh, the less sensitive material. So although I'm t- uh, starting to <clears throat> have a new recording this week, uh, I'm not really quite so sure uh, whether. That problem will not occur anymore. Also, so we will see. Uh, <clears throat> just uh, keep the fingers crossed, and uh, let's get to it. So, uh, the later part of this chapter, uh, which uh, we began on this chapter, uh, <clears throat> start uh, starting to survey the eukaryotic cellular structure, internal all these different organelles and. Their functions. So two major uh, <coughs> outstanding organelles, which are one is mitochondria, uh, which is present in in all eukaryotes, uh, and the other one is chloroplast. Uh, unfortunately, only those autotrophs like uh, plant, green plants, and some of the single cell, the photosynthetic eukaryotes like algae, uh, only. Have that, and we also <clears throat> went over the origin of this uh, these two organelles, like uh, under the theory of endosymbiosis uh, <clears throat> uh, hypothesis or theory. Oh, by the way, actually the original recording that got crashed, uh, I made a comment about that uh, particular question on the midterm exam that asking uh, for the. The outer and the inner membrane uh, of the mitochondria, and related and in relation to the endosymbiosis theory. Although uh, that particular question was a kind of a, a little bit of an adaptation of the previous sample exam questions. So, uh, for those who studied that, that material, uh, I believe uh, shouldn't have any problem in uh, <coughs> picking a correct answer. But that I realized that that. Particular content is not really actually was uh, out of beyond the scope of the coverage of uh, the of the midterm exam. Uh, so I decided to exclude uh, that question in grading. Uh, I'm still grading the exam. I haven't been able to finish, uh, so uh, I will <coughs> expedite that one so that uh, I can uh, get back to you with the result. Uh, Uh, soon, uh, how soon? Yeah, it depends. But I will, uh, I will try my best under the circumstances. But uh, having said that, so that question, uh, regardless of uh, whether you mark the correct answer or not, uh, everyone will get the credit uh, for that uh, particular question. Uh, I kind of uh, got confused that I thought that was uh, already I have mentioned uh, that. Uh, the content of the endosymbiosis theory during the lecture, but it turned out that no, I haven't uh, yet before taking the midterm exam. So that's what it is. And uh, so uh, the focus of the mainstay, the these two organelles, mitochondria and the chloroplast, will be on the center stage of this particular section uh, discussing 
the cellular energy metabolism because uh, these two, respectively, these two organelles are responsible for the major two uh, types of metabolism. One is catabolism and the other one is an anabolism. Actually, this uh, the process, the metabolism taking place in the mitochondria and the one taking place in the chloroplast that we are going to take a look at uh, today are the the probably the uh, the major uh, representative of each of this the example of anabolism and catabolism respectively. This photograph uh, shows a human body, uh, probably a PET scan image, uh, showing actually two <coughs> area in the body uh, where the highest, uh, the most activity, the highest rate of metabolic activity in terms of oxygen consumption. So in other words, uh, this brain and this, uh, whatever it is, whether it is a heart or something else, uh, because uh, I'm not quite sure which uh, exactly, which organ uh, is this, uh, since I'm not a medical doctor, uh, shows the highly uh, lit up area uh, due to the uh, highest oxygen demand because uh, there is a way that we can trace the internal body oxygen so where the oxygen is the highest that means the supply of oxygen the demand for the oxygen is the highest which is actually uh, highly correlated with the, uh, the their respective metabolic activity and that's what we are going to take a look at first in this section why why where the oxygen demand is so high we uh, the particular metabolism that we are going to look at the cellular respiration which is the a prime example of um, catabolism and, and the mitochondria uh, <coughs> they participate and its role is uh, the most significant in the overall procedure of that uh, respiration. And that respiration uh, is all about this energy transaction as we have already uh, looked at earlier somewhere as this ATP uh, is a nucleotide that by breaking down this uh, uh, one area of this uh, chemical bond uh, we utilize if you break this chemical bond in between this uh, phosphate uh, group then energy will be released like that so with that energy so this is obviously a catabolism okay. so then we can uh, perform a lot of uh, the necessary building up a process in the body okay. and now this ADP which is the exhausted version used up uh, form of the cellular energy then this ADP will be replenished recharged into to go back to the form of ATP which I uh, compared it as a fully charged the battery so obviously this conversion from ADP oh, whoops, from ADP to ATP uh, be obviously in an anabolism because you are trying to put uh, one phosphate group uh, to be attached to this uh, originally having only two phosphates okay so that means this to proceed this anabolic reaction uh, you don't need the energy supply. So where are you going to fund this process? It says in the body the food will provide such energy source. So you break the food molecule so that you can extract the energy from this food molecule and to fund this energy requiring anabolic procedure. So this energy ATP will keep uh, recycling uh, like this. Uh, so we are what we are going to take a look at first uh, at this section is this part how how by breaking down this food molecule how can cells uh, synthesize this ATP from ATP the actual detailed procedure although yeah 
we haven't touched only even the, the surface scratch yet. Uh, even if the overall procedure that we are going to take a look at is not really that simple looking, but in reality, the actual complexity of the all these biochemical reactions that we are going to take a look at is really uh, the mind-boggling, so confusing and, and complex uh, reactions. So once again, uh, we will be able to acknowledge that okay, all these metabolisms, uh, metabolisms are all nothing but all interconnected. The chemical reactions are the one that enabling this the activity of metabolism. So having said that. Uh, mitochondria is the place uh, <clears throat> where this uh, so-called cellular respiration uh, which uh, produces a lot of those ATPs uh, from ADP after breaking down the food molecule the overall procedure we call the cellular respiration and this mitochondria because of that since the mitochondria is the place main place that means actually the, some other area in the cells are also involved in this overall procedure. Yes, the cytoplasm is also uh, participates in the procedure at the early part. Uh, so that's why we usually compare this mitochondria as the cellular power plant like this. Uh, so overall, this is a ca uh, catabolic breakdown of glucose through uh, this aerobic respiration, uh, so to speak. So this is a term. The aerobic respiration is the term knowledge that we uh, uh, assign to this process. But what is what is this uh, aerobic respiration uh, in nature? That aerobic respiration is actually uh, the to the glucose. Glucose is a, through the procedure. Glucose is oxidized. So here we are going to take a look at and trying to distinguish the difference between two uh, opposite direction of reactions. One is oxidation, and the other one is reduction. Okay, so glucose that food molecule, the main ingredient of most of the food these days we consume, glucose is going to be destroyed. Yeah, obviously gl glucose molecule is going to be broken down, but uh, from the other angle, what we can describe this process is the oxidation of glucose uh, to become what? Glucose is oxidized. Usually when you try to think of oxidation, what's oxidation intuitively? It sounds like it's something is uh, has to do with this oxygen. Yes, that's why we need to breathe in uh, the air for this proce process. Uh, we need obviously the, the oxygen in the air to uh, get this thing uh, going on. Uh, to become carbon dioxide. So this glucose molecule will eventually will be burned. Oxidation is usually we compare it as a burning procedure. Uh, it's very similar to uh, we burned our gasoline uh, to fuel as a fuel uh, <coughs> to drive the car uh, to our body to drive our body uh, to the level of a function. Uh, we need to burn the glucose. Uh, to burn, we need in oxygen. It's kind of a comparison. Uh, and then the glucose molecule, uh, the fuel, or the, the molecule that we use as a fuel, uh, will eventually turn out to be the carbon dioxide and then will be discharged and released and we just uh, uh, kick out this carbon dioxide to the outside. That's of the procedure. But then what's so we need to import the oxygen to make this process get going and then in turn the oxygen will be in this reaction during the reaction will be reduced so the, so that we can describe this procedure at the same time uh, what's happening is oxygen is reduced to water. Okay. 
So definitely we need to define clearly about uh, although for those the uh, science major students uh, I expect that they are all already aware very well aware of what's the oxidation and what's the reduction uh, there are two ways of looking at and distinguish this uh, reaction so uh, one way is uh, more intuitive way of oxidation defining oxidation is if a mole molecule any molecule so to speak like molecule a gets to combine with oxygen this is an oxygen then this a is oxidized okay um on the other hand the if this molecule a o uh this molecule a got free of the oxygen the the combining with oxygen then it is reduced so a become free so an oxygen uh, it's got separated and then now this molecule A is reduced by definition in chemistry so in other words oxidizing uh, in if any molecule uh, is combined with oxygen during the chemical reaction as a consequence then this molecule is uh, is said to be oxidized on the other hand if this molecule was able to uh, escape from oxygen to become free is if this molecule is away uh, from oxygen then this molecule is reduced so this way of viewing uh, the reaction oxidation is totally uh, based on focused on the oxygen from the perspective of the, uh, of the oxygen but in many occasions actually this oxidation uh, reduction reaction can also occur uh, without seemingly uh, involving the the, the intervention uh, from oxygen uh, actually per se at least uh, at the surface and then how do we define and then on that occasion then we can also uh, define them as the uh, by the presence or the flow of the electrons yeah if any molecule loses the uh, electron then we uh, say that molecule is oxidized remember oxygen is uh, probably perhaps the one of the most electron greedy so anybody most of the material cannot win uh, in the battle uh, of taking the electron with the oxygen oxygen always will will oxygen will take your electrons away usually that's the the fate of the most of the molecules so we can freely say that uh, any molecule will be oxidized if that molecule loses the electron usually that lost electron will eventually end up in the oxygen oxygen will say thank you and then take the electron okay. uh, on the other hand if any molecule somehow gains electron from somebody else then that molecule is said to be reduced and one very important uh, thing to remember about this oxidation and the reduction uh, reaction is it's always uh, occurring at the same time in at the same time to the opposite direction so it is not a, a one-way uh, directional chemical reaction but it's always a bi-directional two-way street reactions so if one molecule is oxidized then the other molecule will in return thanks to that molecule that has just uh, become oxidized the other molecule that participating in this oxidation reaction re reduction reaction will be reduced so somebody loses then because of that somebody else will gain in terms of this electron picking games so either way uh in case of what it's an obvious that you you can follow the fate of oxygen where the oxygen goes then you can clearly define the reaction uh, by the presence whether this molecule 
gets to be combined with oxygen or not or the vice versa then you can uh, determine whether the molecule is oxidized or reduced or on the other hand in some other occasions uh, if you can determine the fate of the re uh, electron originally present in this particular molecule then you can also uh, determine whether this molecule is oxidized or reduced after uh, following the uh, fate of the electron so but that's not uh, actually important in the only reason why I, I felt compelled to mention about this oxidation and reduction reaction is actually the reaction the cellular respiration that we are going to take a look at this uh, today is nothing but actually this oxidation reduction reaction we usually abbreviate this oxidation reduction reaction a lot of times they say redox redox reaction because always this uh, oxygen reduction reaction does not occur independently separately but uh, happens together one is being oxidized then the other one is reduced in this occasion of let's say the imaginary molecules of hey this a and b uh, so here we uh, follow the electron so a is the one got uh, to lose uh, its electron in this reaction chemical reaction as a result so after losing electron this a molecule a will become ionized look at this the positive ion because it has lost electron uh, so then oh since you lost your electron so you became oxidized okay so a is oxidized but then on the other hand who who picked up the electron originally present in a me this molecule b was the one who uh, took the electron from a so now then we can say the b uh, has been reduced right so this gain of electron uh, since B gained one electron which was originally present in an A so B uh, is reduced in this reaction okay so this is what I'm saying that the redox reaction always occur one is oxidized and then in return the other one uh, is reduced in return is something that we are going to take a look at the overall whole bottom line of this reaction in the cellular respiration during which energy is being transferred from one originally starting from food molecule and eventually stepwise uh, transfer of this uh, energy into uh, to build some molecule that uh, the ATP which is starting from ATP is overall it is actually redox oxidation actually if you lose the electron so you just your electrons got uh, <coughs> taken away and it is actually this uh, as good as uh, this is uh, identical to the catabolic reaction uh, here to illustrate that point uh, this These molecules uh, has been uh, in different color coding. So this uh, yellow, yellow color here uh, indicate lower energy level, whereas this uh, little bit, uh, reddish orange uh, representing a higher energy uh, status. Then what you can see is this the B, the now ionized after picking up an electron this reduced b has a higher energy level which means reduction reaction is uh, the one actually uh, gained an energy 
So in terms of this, whether it is an oxidation or reduction reaction, which one is a catabolic reaction uh, and the, which one is an anabolic reaction, you can the, figure out by uh, this the uh, diagram. Since reduced molecule gained an energy, that means it has to be. Uh, if any molecule during the reactions got <coughs> reduced, then it must be a, a kind of anabolic reaction then this molecule a after losing its electron being oxidized and then become lower energy status means that it's got uh, it went through a uh, catabolic reaction after losing after releasing its energy in other words here the point is though the, the reason why i'm showing this seemingly a little bit of confusing diagram of uh, oxidation, re oxidation re and the reduction reaction is that hopefully you by now uh, you are all smart huh, to be able to figure out the reason why this guy is trying to sell this diagram to you now this food molecule that the chemical reaction that we are going to take a look at witness is nothing but the uh, breaking down the uh, uh, we are making this food molecule to undergo a catabolic reaction, catabolic breakdown. Then uh, what we can also say about this food molecule is this food molecule is now going to be oxidized, right? And then actually it makes sense. In order to oxidize this, we need to invite the oxygen. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. So that's why we have to breathe in to get the, the oxygen supply from the outside and that's why if we suffocate ourselves for like uh, longer than uh, although it de depends on different individuals ability but usually if we suffocate ourselves for longer than five minutes then we die like we pronounce ourselves a dead uh, it's because of this lack of energy production without this oxygen uh, this whole cellular respiration can not uh, continue and so we cannot continually uh, produce the enough amount of ATP to support all entire our, our body especially the, there are two areas where they are our the demand for this ATP is the highest the brain and the heart these two organs will not uh, be able to sustain uh, their integrity without having the uh, continuous supply of the oxygen because of this reason cannot make enough ATP this is overall uh, to summarize this reaction I actually <coughs> took the liberty of this my ugly on my own drawing uh, some years ago uh, so here, uh, this is a. You know, what we can see is this. Taking the example of this glucose molecule. Chemical formula C six H two O six whatever, will enter, uh, as a food molecule, enter the cell, and then this, what we can uh, learn from this diagram is there are three uh, <coughs> continual. Uh, process so metabolic actually uh, reactions are uh, in sequence like step number one and step number two and step number three there are three stages of this overall the cellular respiration and as a result and the result and and the ultimate the purpose the reason why we are doing this is a lots of ATP molecules like this uh, after you accomplish these three uh, steps of the cellular respiration and uh, what's going on actually this step three is uh, the most important uh, so that's why the actual more detailed process is zoomed in in this particular inset of the figure like this and we are going to take a look at this uh, feature uh, today and that is the actual mechanism how 
the ATP is produced from ADP. So uh, this is the overview of such the uh, process. Now, having said that, let's get into the one by one the step. The first stage uh, here, just by looking at this uh, cartoon, what we can <coughs> sense is in the first step, the end result is this glucose molecule is split into two halves. And that's exactly what's happening in the first in the first stage of uh, this whole process okay and which is uh, this process is named uh, is a glycolysis so this first stage of the whole entire cellular respiration <coughs> its name is glycolysis by the way uh, to summarize the overall the cellular respiration is uh, the glucose molecule Nobody has to remember this chemical formula of glucose, but this is glucose molecule. Uh, with the help of oxygen, then it will become, eventually, carbon dioxide. This is the fate of the carbon to become a carbon dioxide. And the fate of oxygen will become water, like this. Okay. So this is overall summary of uh, chemical reaction happening in this cellular respiration is name. Or another name of this uh, cellular respiration is a lot of times it's also called aerobic respiration. to indicate the presence of oxygen yes you need to have this oxygen that's why it is called the aerobic respiration uh, so what's happening is the glucose will throughout this aerobic respiration glucose molecule will become carbon dioxide and the oxygen will be reduced so glucose will be oxidized into carbon dioxide and oxygen will be reduced into uh, water is overall summary of this reaction and uh, why do you do this because then you have some gain lots of ATP molecules will be produced as a consequence so anyway so this is overall re uh, reaction of the aerobic uh, respiration and the first stage of such aerobic respiration is called glycolysis yes this glycolysis which means that you are trying to break down lysis whenever you lyse something the english uh, I try to describe that as by lysis okay breakdown and glyco the carbon the sugar is going to be lysed okay. um, so the bottom line of this whole reaction is what we can say about this glycolysis is uh, that the partial breakdown of glucose so it is not a complete breakdown but a partial breakdown of glucose and another keyword appearing over here cytoplasm uh, indicates the location uh, where it takes place so this whole glycolysis which looks very simple uh, is very disappointingly simple glucose molecule will be broken down into two lines just like a, a long baguette will be <coughs> like cut into two pieces because uh, obviously a baguette long baguette is too big uh, to have uh, for us to have and, and once so we just break 
into smaller pieces, maybe uh, as kind of an analogy uh, that we can apply to this whole procedure. Uh, sounds very simple and it takes place cytoplasm. That means at this stage, no mitochondria. Yes. So uh, for this procedure, if you, for some reason, if you want to quit this whole entire procedure at this point, hey, I don't want to go into any further details and I'm, I'm not really interested in to continue on this process. Okay, so can I resign? Uh, yes, sure you can, technically speaking. So you can just um, sign off the contract uh, and not involved in the, any further procedure. At that stage, uh, no harm is done. Mitochondria uh, is not even uh, like even studied to what is a uh, fit. So in other words, this glycolysis can take place in the organism where uh, no mitochondria are available, just like prokaryotes. Prokaryotes can also uh, do this process. Uh, the meta uh, chemical reaction is something that we can uh, figure out by looking at this whole entire summary like that. Yeah. So, do you get anything? Yes. Uh, even you quit at this point, uh, you get still a kind of a still partial uh, wage. Even if, even though you do not earn the full wage because you uh, have not uh, accomplished the entire chemical reaction all the way down to the end, but still, since you have a little bit of early commitment, so you will be able to get a little bit of a amount of a energy. So. The bottom line is that you have a very small amount of ATP energy uh, production uh, you will have. So that's the kind of summary of the glycolysis. And more importantly, at this point, no oxygen is required. No mitochondria's commitment and no oxygen requirement yet uh, so so you might wonder if you can quit at this point and until this point actually no oxygen is required and why do you have to die under the suffocating uh, environment just because you cut off from the oxygen supply you don't really have to die uh, yes, that's a very unfortunate thing as a multicellular organism. A single cellular organism uh, where you don't have any uh, development of such a sophisticated organs uh, having a high demand of oxygen like brain or heart. And just because you were put under such environment of no oxygen available, you don't really have to die. You can simply go up to this point of a glycolysis and then, then and extract only very small a small amount of ATP uh, which is absolutely minimum uh, amount of uh, energy uh, necessary for your survival then you can yeah somehow <coughs> um, manage your life but the uh, body big body the multicellular organism having such a high area of high uh, high oxygen demand then those sensitive parts die first so overall your entire uh, body cannot survive this that's the sad thing about it okay so that's the summary of a simple summary of this uh, first part which is glycolysis but by the way actually in reality although i have simply described this thing as a such a really really incredibly simple uh, chemical reaction glucose will be cut into two halves that's it obviously it is a catabolic reaction of course if glucose molecule is a split broken into two equal parts right you don't even i don't even mention that what exactly the identity of this the split form of this chemical so you don't really have to by the way his name is a pyruvic acid or pyruvates but who cares uh, at this level of us. understanding uh, it is not necessary for you to understand this whole procedure uh, so I just 
didn't bother to even mention the name of the product. But the thing is, this whole overall procedure, why? Hey. Oh, sorry. Why? This whole overall procedure, 10, 10 enzymes. 10 different enzymes are required to make this whole sequential steps of chemical reaction until this glucose molecule become is to split version of this whatever the chemical is 10 reaction 10 sequential we <coughs> chemical reactions which is obviously overall it, although it is a catabolic reaction but probably i have actually men mentioned this uh, earlier somewhere in this class uh, it will take even though it is a catabolic reaction so it is a spontaneous reaction but without this enzymes involvement then it will take about hey about five thousand years to complete this for this glucose molecule spontaneously re to reach to this split version broken version through this uh, thing but with the involvement of all these enzymes although 10 different enzymes that are in <clears throat> like like come they are built in the factory they uh, work in sequential manners um, but it will take like it's very instantaneously it takes I didn't really bother to remember how actually quickly the whole procedure can uh, be uh, finished but it's very short time or like probably tens of seconds or I don't know and so let's get into the second stage uh, which is what's happening uh, is like this second stage of the whole uh, aerobic respiration appears to be taking place uh, in the mitochondria right this is like my ugly uh, representation of mitochondria uh, this is our this is our membrane and this is inner membrane uh, have a more folded to accommodate uh, larger surface area that's why inner membrane mitochondria has this uh, little bit of a weird shape uh, same characteristics can uh, you find in the case of the chloroplast that uh, shortly after we are going to take a look at in uh, this chapter so here what's happening is this carbon dioxide production what you can see is carbon dioxide right which means the original food molecule in the form of entered in the form of a glucose molecule is now became the carbon dioxide even at the completion of the second stage of this uh, respiration so uh, as far as this glucose molecule is concerned it's finished it's completely burned completely oxidized so actually for the sake of this carbon uh use this existing in the form of a carbon dioxide which means single carbon having two double bond with oxygen no it's not the angle you are not a water what are you talking about <laughs> uh, you are as a carbon dioxide you are simply having this kind of a geometry uh, this is the ultimate the, as far as this carbon this is the highest highest status for carbon to be oxidized you cannot further oxidize carbon anymore hey I'm full uh, enough 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 is enough stop it why don't you right uh, is uh, the result of this whole procedure it's, so it sounds a little weird why do we then still need a 
the final, the third stage of this respiration. Carbon is done. Your job is done. Then, uh, is there anything else that we need to take care of? Yes, there is. And uh, <clears throat> exciting is, or oh, surprising me, actually that the last, the final part is the most important uh, part of the reaction for this, as far as this ATP production goes. But anyway, so uh, this chemical reaction is called the TCA cycle. But there are other versions of uh, the uh, name TCA cycle, or some other times it's called also called a uh, Krebs. Not C. Sorry, we are not food. It's a name of a person. Krebs cycle. The biochemist who uh, figured out this whole complex uh, metabolic procedure, and the reason why. It's called the cycle is actually it is uh, the chemical reaction is uh, arranged in the circular form it's a it's a like cyclic form unlike linear sequential form of the chemical uh, reactions that were found in the case of uh, glycolysis the first stage of this uh, aerobic respiration so in inside of this mitochondria this whole chemical reaction involved in this what about this tca cycle or Krebs cycle <clears throat> is over here okay several enzymes obviously also involved in each different intermediate uh, reactions right uh, so what we can actually uh, summarize for this second stage of a uh, reaction is what we can say about this now it is not partial anymore uh, for this carbohydrate uh, glucose molecules sake it is a complete oxidation of a glucose like I said it's gone it's finished it's burned out completely and this mitochondrial matrix means the location of this uh, reaction it takes place in the mitochondrial matrix what's matrix the internal body supply the uh, space it is a kind of a generic term it is not specifically locating any particular part of the mitochondria only but any uh, some internal space uh, of a, a little bit of a complexity then we just uh, use the term matrix uh, okay so this mitochondrial matrix in Korea it is called this yes uh, is the location so to give you a little better idea about what mitochondrial matrix is probably you all know now if this is mitochondria outer membrane the inner membrane of mitochondria is usually is highly folded inwardly like this And the matrix is here, M, internal space. This is mitochondrial matrix. And that space is where actually you can find the mitochondrial DNAs and all other steps are also in, located in internal space. And that's where this second part of this uh, reaction, the TCA cycle or Krebs cycle, is occurring, right? And once again, uh, you still have some gain, uh, so <clears throat> you some as a, as a little bit of motivation, a small amount of ATP, which is actually not enough. Altogether, the first part of the chemical reaction, glycolysis, glycolysis, uh, the amount of ATP you get, and the second part, uh, TCA cycle, the amount of ATP you get, all combined together is not even nearly enough for. Uh, sustaining or your body and lives without the final stage then it's all over the procedure is useless uh, although uh, for a single cell organism it's a totally different sto uh, story so, and, and another thing is yes here uh, actually the most important thing about the second part is yeah of course this the carbon dioxide release is one thing uh, Im important, but uh, the very important thing is something called the cofactors. 
uh, for the electron transport. Remember, this entire procedure is actually, if you look at it, it is a oxidation and reduction reaction. So in other words, electron glucose is oxidized into what? Carbon dioxide. Then uh, there are two different ways of viewing uh, the oxidation reaction. One is from the perspective of an oxygen. Since the glucose carbon is eventually, ultimately, uh, is combined with the oxygen, so fine, glucose is oxidized. But also, during the process, the electrons present in the originally present in the glucose molecules got all stripped away, then being transferred into somebody else. Eventually, yes, the oxygen, right? So one actually have a little bit of the uh, confusion about uh, this pro uh, the reaction in that you may think that oh this oxygen this oxygen is the one uh, is a uh, from air answer is nope this oxygen is not the one oxygen that you breathe it in. No. This oxygen is actually the internal oxygen. So the oxygen that you need to complete this entire aerobic respiration uh, is the other usage is waiting for the, uh, uh, the another role at the final, the very final stage of the entire procedure so this oxygen is not the oxygen that from the air uh, so in other words until this part you still do not need any oxygen is the point okay so for the electrons eventually to deliver those electrons from the glucose to the oxygen, there are some middlemen to deliver this. Uh, glucose molecules oxygen is not directly transferred into the oxygen that we breathe in. If that was the case, uh, we will, the energy gain, the efficiency of this uh, procedure is so low, so we wouldn't be able to obtain uh, that much of the ATP but by simply transferring a little bit by just like you are uh, coming down from the top to the lower level by stepwise using some kind of stairs so by doing so you can uh, make yourself a uh, little more stable and without having to burn your entire uh, release the energy at the single event that's how you can increase this efficiency of the overall reaction is what uh, we can summarize this whole things but anyway so you do need some of a middle guy the transporter there are two uh, such uh, electron transporter so uh, are produced uh, at the end of this the crab cycle or TCA cycle of the second stage of the respiration one is its name is NADH uh, it is a reduced form so it's always a redox reaction one uh, once you obtain electrons then you are reduced and then you can lose your electron to somebody else uh, having that uh, the higher electron negativity then you become oxidized so these in that sense uh, these electron carriers uh, can be said of uh, the real uh, the middleman so this nadh is oxidized to become nad plus so you have lost your uh, hydrogen okay usually this uh, hydrogen is the kind of a vehicle that travels together uh, with the electrons because uh, remember the hydrogens uh, is a little unique in that it doesn't have any uh, neutrons but it has only an electron and proton so once 
is the hydrogen has only one electron so if it gets to lose its one single electron then it's become the only identity remained in hydrogen uh, ion is a, a proton right that's why hydrogen ion the hydrogen ion is called proton is the reason why okay. so anyway usually this the transaction of the electron uh, goes with in the form of uh, the hydrogen usually that's what's happening in this entire procedure so such is the NADH is one such middleman so pick up hydrogen and an electron from somebody else the origin origin is a glucose who else and then it becomes oxidized to after yielding is electron and hydrogen to somebody stronger guy and eventually the electron will go to the oxygen another such the carrier is the produced in this cycle is FADH2 now oxidizes so it will become FAD okay. um, so these are the actually probably the more important outcomes of this uh, the cycle so those carriers produced in this stage will have an, a very important role in driving the final the most important reaction of uh, the respiration and another thing so up until this uh, even stage, as I mentioned, uh, you don't really need any oxygen. Remember, oxygen over here is not the oxygen that you got from outside uh, the air. Okay? So, no oxygen is needed. The only area that the stage that you get to need the lab oxygen, atmospheric oxygen, is the very final stage of the entire uh, process. Okay. So that's what's happening and this is a little more realistic uh, although still is a highly simplified version of this whole procedure uh, so this entire space is a uh, the matrix where actual this cycle TCA cycle or Krebs cycle, whatever you want to call, which is fine, either way. Um, and as you can see, NADH, 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 and also FADH2s are the major product. Although you get to have a uh, one ATP molecule is also produced. Then all these the carriers not ATP not ATP but all these electron carriers will be funneled into so the final the location of this the third stage the final stage is actually this membrane of the mitochondria which is the inner inner mitochondria membrane so that's what we are going to take a look at now here so this final stage is called the uh, electron transfer chain uh, because what you see is actually that the electrons uh, contained uh, having uh, these carrier electron carrier molecules so, uh, they originally get their electrons but then will soon lose the electrons to somebody else and then that electron will also be transferred to the some other guy which has a stronger demand and power and then uh, will be also handed over to other guy to reach to arrive eventually to the oxygen is basically what's happening in this process so uh, we can summarize this overall procedure of the final stage yeah? the electron transport as uh, the oxidation of the electron transport cofactors that NADH and the FADH2s will be oxidized okay? 
and somebody else will be re reduced, right? Uh, and what's where uh, does it happen? It's an inner membrane of the mitochondria because these are three big balls represent such the big guys taking the electrons from those cofactors. And then these big guys have actually an unpacking order. So, for example, this guy will eventually uh, get the uh, electrons and then will be lose its electron to the guy next sitting next to and then once again that electron will be handed over to the finally the the other guy and then eventually that electron will go to the oxygen okay is what's happening uh, so like I said the oxygen will be reduced into water after uh, taking remember that our electrons will travel in the form of a hydrogen right so oxygen can combine with hydrogen and then become reduced is the ultimate outcome of this whole procedure okay uh, but the why do you do that this the importance of this final stage is the amount of ATP synthesized is huge relatively speaking is a huge amount but then more important thing is the mechanism this is the, uh, I have just mentioned somewhere uh, else in probably um, uh, when I get to speak uh, about the endosymbiosis theory that little guy the ancestral form of the mitochondria has just revolutionized a whole, whole metabolism by somehow inventing uh, the unique way of uh, utilizing oxygen uh, to power up the new way of uh, ATP synthesis is all based upon this so-called the concentration gradient of hydrogen ion the gradient means somewhere some kind of an inequality imbalance where the amount is high in one location and relatively speaking the other end that amount the amount of that particular molecule is a scarce and then some kind of a gradient will be formed and especially if that gradient is something is about the, the molecular concentration and then something that we describe as this the diffusion uh, diffusion is a, a spontaneous diffusion of molecule will happen always from high concentration of such molecule towards the low lower concentration just like it's very similar to the way water flows water always uh, flows from higher to the lower ground and all those molecule will move uh, this is one way of movement of molecule diffusion yeah. and the characteristics of this diffusion is always spontaneous which means it follows the natural law of physics which is in particular the second law of thermodynamics which is about entropy why a certain molecule moves always from highly organized the high concentrated highly concentrated area to the lower concentrated area is because uh, in terms of each individual molecule they are taking larger space of movement will definitely increase 
the entropy. So that's the natural way of molecular movement. Okay. Just like when you smoke cigarette, you pop out your cigarette smoke, then those smoke will spread all over to the other air because of this concentration difference. So we call that such difference in concentration of such particular molecule as the concentration gradient. Yes. But then here what we are talking about is hydrogen ion concentration gradient. What it says is there will be some kind of a build up of what 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 build up of concentration gradient of hydrogen ion between the outer and the inner membrane. What do I mean by that? So what it means is if hey I don't like red here. I like white. If this was mitochondria, and obviously there will be some space. This is outer, and this is the inner membrane. So we do have this space. Okay, we usually call this an intermembrane space, and this in space, <coughs> the. So, uh, uh, actually, this is uh, a little bit of an uh, incorrect statement. The hydrogen uh, ion concentration gradient happens between inner and outer membrane is not actually co entirely correct. It's because in this intermembrane space and the internal matrix, so the between, intermembrane space and the matrix is probably the correct way of describing this concentration gradient so in other words quickly so all this area the space the intermembrane space okay where hydrogen ion concentration is high where this matrix this area the hydrogen ion concentration is low okay. so then you have this kind of a gradient and by the law of physics once you have this gradient concentration gradient then this hydrogen ion will try to move from where to where from the highly concentrated area which is this this intermembrane space filled with hydrogen ion high concentration will try to move toward this inside of this uh, mitochondria which is matrix and that is a, some kind of a, uh, we can compare this actually this uh, the uh, event uh, with uh this the case of uh the hydraulic uh the power plant uh so water the energy uh the energy created by like this kinetic energy from uh, the uh, the water fall in the uh hydraulic power plant uh, will drive the, uh, the electricity generation this hydrogen movement from some particular location which is the, the intermembrane space towards the internal space which is a matrix of the mitochondria will drive uh, the uh, energy uh, enough to synthesize the anabolic reaction which is conversion of ADP into ATP in this case. Uh, then the question is, 
so that hydrogen concentration gradient will drive this synthesis of ATP from ADP using so that will serve as a such energy um, then the question uh, will become obvious uh, in that how those hydrogens ended up in such a small or narrow uh, space which is a small intermembrane space is probably the, the question and we have already seen such accumulation of a hydrogen ion uh, in the occasion of this the lysosome the remember this proton pump in the lysosome actively actively using the ATP energy of ATP hydrolysis uh, this the proton pump the transporter protein present in the membrane of the lysosome so uh, transferring the hydrogen from outside to accumulate inside of the lysosome so that eventually the internal environment of uh, lysosome become highly acidic due to the high concentration of this hydrogen ion right uh, so actually this the electron transporting the big guys present in the in inner membrane of the mitochondria are acting similarly uh, so in other words this the these are three different such the electron transport ch chain uh, enzyme complex which take uh, the electrons and hydrogen uh, from the NADH and FADH uh, two, but then they they have also uh, the extra ability uh, serving as the proton pump. So all these are actually also serving as the proton pump which means it actively transport the hydrogen ion from one area one location to other specific area in which case this the intermembrane space so due to the action of this proton pump activity all this hydrogen ion will be accumulated in a narrow space of the created between outer and the inner membrane of the mitochondria but one thing unique about these proton pumps uh, in the electron transfer chain reaction is they do not require ATP hydrolysis to drive is it is an active like against natural if you want to transport one uh, such a particular molecule from the lower concentrated area like this to already crowded area of this hydrogen ion then it will be directly uh, opposite to the nature of this diffusion okay the spontaneous reaction so whenever you're trying to do something against this uh, spontaneous reaction direction then it takes energy because it's non-spontaneous reaction that's why uh, in the earlier example of the lysosome uh, that proton pump uh, requires the ATP as an energy source but in this occasion they don't 
they do not. They somehow, without uh, having this ATP hydrolysis, they still can do this. It's a magic. Um, so anyway, as a result, this hydrogen ion uh, uh, will be accumulated and it's the tension uh, gets to be increased. So then this hydrogen ion will try to escape this narrow crowd is uh, space but there is only one way for them to escape which is this particular enzyme okay its name is atp synthase the name is not important but the only th the thing important is hydrogen ion can escape through this special channel or tunnel like uh, uh, space but then by doing so uh, this is where like this uh, analogy or comparison with the uh, hydraulic power plant is uh, the water uh, is falling down from top to bottom that energy uh, will drive the uh, this motor to generate the generator of electricity that's how you create some electricity and here the hydrogen ion will pass through with the strong force sort of thing and then that energy is enough to convert the ADP into the ATP is what uh, this thing whole thing is about so that's the energy part so that's how you can synthesize this ATP uh, the energy and then what about the uh, this oxidation part the oxidation reduction uh, reaction part can actually be carried out independently from this hydrogen ion concentration part so that because at the very first stage already electrons electrons can be separated from hydrogen that's why it becomes hydrogen ion the hydrogen uh, the electrons are stripped away from the hydrogen so the individual electrons can be transferred from these eventually to go to the oxygen uh, so that water uh, is the result of this the oxidation reduction reaction here oxygen is reduced the ultimate guy who lost their electron is the NADH and FADH2, right? Those, the electron cofactor, carrier cofactors. And these big part does these, the so-called pump, hydrogen ion pump proteins are here in this electron transfer chain procedure are acting as a middleman, simply. I took the electron from one guy and then uh, hand this electron to over the, the other guy and so on until that electron is got delivered into the oxygen is the kind of a very simplistic uh, version of the um, mechanism in, uh, explaining uh, how this ATP synthesis and also the oxygen is reduced uh, at the same time okay Now, uh, like I said, so uh, it, when oxygen is plenty, and then this aerobic respiration can take place, so whatever, whenever uh, there is a mitochondria, so it's a eukaryote, any eukaryote cells can carry out this aerobic uh, uh, respiration completely. Yeah. Uh, However, what if that a lot of uh, the animal can uh, experience this so-called anaerobic condition where oxygen is absolutely not available at all or the supply of oxygen is not enough. This anaerobic condition, then all this uh, aerobic respiration will stop in which point? Like, 
during the anaerobic condition the although the actual procedure where the oxygen is uh, absolutely required is the electron transport so on the anaerobic condition probably you may think that this first glycolysis and the second part which is a Krebs cycle may be able to take place but then cells actually sense this anaerobic non-oxygen uh, present condition and then immediately shuts down the entire procedure of both so the second and third part so entirely all this mitochondria's involvement is cut off so under such condition the only possible part of this whole metabolism is the first the glycolysis this is the only part of the entire process that you still can uh, maintain on the uh, unaerobic condition then you have a challenge uh, uh, because that the, the, the uh, because of the reason that we are going to see uh, shortly in a minute so under such condition larval organism uh, switch quickly is just catabolic uh, reaction or which originally involved the whole entire one two three steps uh, including the the final electron transport chain which requires the uh, oxygen supply into something else which is the fermentation uh, so the nature or definition of a fermentation uh, is what we can say about is the during fermentation, the product, the final product of the glycolysis, which is broken, the two split half uh, of uh, glucose, is further metabolized to become something else. Under no normal, I shouldn't say normal, under an aerobic condition where oxygen is uh, available, that product this product will immediately go into the mitochondria to start the Krebs cycle right but then here with uh, no oxygen available that product cannot enter the mitochondria to continue on this aerobic respiration but then instead of us staying uh, and waiting until the oxygen supply is resumed that product is quickly converted into something else that's basically what the fermentation reaction is all about and then what kind of product is made instead in on the fermentation reaction is uh, it depends on different organisms for example in yeast uh, the product the converted product is actually alcohol that's why brewing the yeast to produce the these beers is kind of a, a big industry and a big uh, the uh, big interesting point for a human uh, is because of this particular uh, characteristic of this yeast fermentation uh, but on the other hand in the human and or any other uh, the mammals uh, of the muscles uh, tissues it is converted into something else it's not an alcohol but uh, some other product called the lactic acid or lactate Uh, you may think some of you may think and actually why uh, we couldn't have a, such a, a beautiful uh, fermentation metabolism where the uh, alcohol is produced if that was the case then we can enjoy ourselves like every Friday evening or we can uh, suffocate ourselves 
to produce our own supply of uh, the alcohol so that we can we don't have to go out especially on the this, this is a, a pandemic era we can stay home and we don't have to spend any money and we can produce our own alcohol internally and uh, become a little bit happy but uh, <laughs> maybe actually uh, that uh, such a lack of such ability is a, a, a huge blessing I guess uh, if there was the case then every soccer uh, game probably would have uh, ended in within five minutes of the start uh, because the ending up always is fighting uh, each other and all those uh, the pr uh, praise the descendants of uh, pray no descendants of prey would have been uh, possible because all those praise eventually kind of uh, like drunken and try to confront with the predator or being captured uh, after being drunken maybe you can easily uh, anticipate such a unfortunate outcomes of in the event of our or animals mammals uh, producing the alcoholic products uh, as a result of this fermentation instead of lactic acid right uh, uh, such a silly uh, joke aside, uh, aside. Uh, so in other words if we think about our human body uh, actually when our majority of our bodies are put under such an unarabic uh, environment they can survive just because we don't have an oxygen doesn't mean that uh, we cannot produce any ATP still we can uh, produce the ATP through this fermentation reaction but the question is uh, why could not Ooh, fine that's fine uh, we don't have any oxygen so we cannot complete uh, till the end of this electron transfer chain of the aerobic respiration but what about the glycolysis right still by managing the glycolysis still we can uh, obtain a little bit very small amount of ATP that's what actually is all for example like this muscle cells do under such an aerobic condition but then why fermentation why can't you stay on this glycolysis because especially if you consider Although I did not show the exact uh, the chemical reaction of this fermentation over here yet, although I provided the such chemical reaction uh, in your lecture handout, the actual overall outcome of this fermentation is a huge waste of energy. Low yield of ATP, but especially uh, the pain, uh, painful part of this energy waste is in this NADH. This precious NADH, you somehow uh, in during this fermentation, you oxidize this NADH into NAD plus. Okay, um, so it seems it doesn't make sense. Why do you have to waste? Because one molecule of this NADH, if you save this, then later on eventually when actually re up when you could reopen this electron transport chain do you know how much atp can you generate out of this one single molecule nadh it's a lot so uh, from the ec uh, the economic standpoint it is a, such a huge waste but then actually the other flip side of this whole s story is there is no other choice but to uh just like probably the autophage reaction right you have to eat yourself to stay alive uh, kind of uh, analogy um so this fermentation although seemingly uh it looks like uh, such a huge waste of energy and an inefficient uh by simply why can't you stop the glycolysis and don't go into fermentation but you don't have any other choice so it is what you can say about the fermentation is it is the absolutely necessary critical the means of survival under 
uh, unerable condition. Why? Because uh, if you want to continue on the glycolysis reaction, okay, the continuation of this glycolysis reaction uh, requires the constant supply of this NAD plus actually. That's what's been involved in the actual detailed procedure of this glycolysis. Remember, it is actually a very complex uh, metabolic reaction requiring the involvement of 10 different enzymes. So, but then under no oxygen condition, you have a problem of constant supply of this NAD+, which is the oxidized form of this NADH. Under the aerobic condition, you have a plenty of supply of this NAD+, where at the end of this, the electron transport chain, the third stage, where all this NADH being produced in during the uh, Krebs cycle will be happily, happily, I'm not so sure about the happy or not, happily oxidized into NAD. And then they can be refunneled into the first stage of this uh, reaction, the glycolysis. But then the entire, under such anaerobic condition, the second and third stage of this reaction is entirely shut off. So there is no way you can get this supply of this NAD+. So you have to oxidize your original NADH, whatever you have, to continue on this glycolysis. Uh, it is not on any kind of odd optional things. You have to. Because if you don't continue, if you can't continue the gly uh, glycolysis, then it's just like a, you are a dead meat, right, so to speak. So whatever it takes, you have to do this, is what actually uh, has been observed as a fermentation. So uh, the dead material NAD plus becomes available uh, after completion of the electron transfer chain under the normal oxygen-rich environment, but under anaerobic condition like this, no electron transfer chain reaction is happening, so no NAD plus is available. That's uh, in this uh, figure that's been summarized. So, under aerobic condition, this the final product of glycolysis. This is the final product of glycolysis. Its name is pyruvate. Uh, can go into <clears throat> and then go to, into this TCA cycle and the third stage electron transport chain blah 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 then as an end result the plenty of plenty of this NAD plus will be available but then under anaerobic condi condition entire whole this thing is not possible so what do you do as a cell, you have to be able to produce some ATP. So you have to convert this pyruvate uh, with some more seemingly wasteful, unnecessary. Uh, it looks like unnecessary, but it actually turns out that very important. Okay. So fermentation reaction during which NADH is converted into NAD plus so that it can go directly into the glycolysis so that glycolysis can continue on so that uh, you can produce the ATP although it's very small amount okay so the cells have to generate NAD plus through fermentation reaction instead is this what's happening so here in annual muscle lactic acid is being produced but in yeast, instead of this pyruvic is ethanols are produced. Okay. So uh, here, what it says is that some uh, facultative, facultative, the facultative uh, uh, anaerobic, which means 
uh, it doesn't really uh, it can it can produce all this energy on the aerobic condition happily but when when uh, on aerobic condition uh, to strikes for example still it can somehow manage to survive by switching its metabolism into fermentation is called facultative anaerobes like some of the microorganisms and some other microorganisms are obligate anaerobic so they actually uh, to them that an oxygen is somehow toxic so oh I don't want to I don't want to do anything like uh, those uh, stupid things like uh, electron transport or oxygen involved thing I am just happy I'm just happy to produce my small amount of ATP uh, only with the glycolysis and the fermentation a lot of microorganisms are just obligate uh, obligate anaerobes yeah. a lot of them also a lot of this anaerobe uh, the microorganism living in inside of our guts maybe actually also an obligate anaerobes too so a lot of those uh, microorganisms like bacteria are uh, such uh, an obligate anaerobic uh, microorganisms but then don't get me wrong so maybe oh those prokaryotes those prokaryotes are uh, they don't have any uh, mitochondria so whatever they are hey can't they just why do they need any uh, oxygen because they're not able to do this whole aerobic respiration after all because they don't have any mitochondria yes uh, but good point but actually it turns out that even though they do not have any such uh, mitochondria the bacteria a lot of bacteria can actually have a it's just surprising they can have this whole entire procedure of the electron transport chain uh, they do have their own such like a TCA cycle and electron transport chain so that they produce a lot of ATPs surprising in that uh, so their entire for those bacteria uh, their entire uh, the cell membrane and cell wall structure are uh, like are taking the role of such, like the gap between cell wall and the, you know uh, the cell membranes are actually providing the function of such a, like intermembrane space-like uh, function and then the electron transport uh, enzyme complexes which are involved in the electron transport chain are present on their cell membrane there maybe some of them the ancestral form of them are actually ancestral, ancestral form of the mitochondria it looks like okay? So, uh, uh, it became a little lengthier uh, lecture once again. So, I will have to stop uh, here the first session and the second part uh, about the photosynthesis uh, and the rest of the stuff, which is about the cytoskeleton, uh, has to await for the second session of the lecture.